Some of you feel like you're on a merry-go-round. Some of you on YouTube. You may be on the world's merry-go-round or the world's treadmill. Going round in circles. You got me going in circles. Did it, did it, do. Going round and round I go. Getting nowhere fast, just going in circles. But there are some of you who also feel as if God has put you on a holding pattern. You feel like you're just standing, marching in time. You're not moving forward. You're not moving backwards. You're not gaining ground. You're just there, taking up space. Well, I want to tell you something. It's a good thing. Whether you feel it, whether you get it or not, it is a good thing. Because what God is doing is a whole lot more with you being still and not gaining any ground than you'd be getting marching to the beat of the world on the treadmill, getting nowhere fast, but running around in circles. So let me tell you this. It may be uncomfortable, but God's got a call on your life and an assignment for you. And you are not wasting one iota of your time. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. Now, Lynn and I used to be the oldest ones in the group. But my cousins got everybody beat. So I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how old or how young. You are being a blessing in ways you have no clue. Anybody who lives around you, anybody who's uh, available to you day by day, whether you're on the workplace, whether you're at your home, whoever you're in contact, even if it's just a mailman, there is something in you that is impacting these other people. You may not see it, but it's happening. God does a whole lot in the dark. He does a whole lot that people cannot see, the eye can't see, the ear can't hear. Neither has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. I'm telling you, God is doing something in you whether you know it or whether you don't. Some of you are sitting still. It's coming to me right now, hot off the press. Some of you are being marinated by God. You're in a marinating stage. He's seasoning you. He's flavoring you. He's tenderizing you. He's getting you ready to, for consumption, for spiritual consumption, because the body is meat, M-E-A-T, indeed. And we feed one another, whether we get that or not, we feed one another. I was looking at the text that everybody does our group well i tell you a bunch of blabber mouths in our group they talk all day and all night and i'm telling you it's so beautiful to see i'm teasing them it's so beautiful to see this is god's church of love online it's beautiful because i'm in bed asleep I, my air conditioner doesn't work so i don't get up till five six seven eight o'clock at night when it starts to cool off then I open up all the windows so the house can cool down. I can sleep when I'm too hot, but I don't want to be up in all that heat. I know it's not healthy. So what I do is I go to bed and everybody else is all up all day, yakking and yakking and yakking, encouraging each other, reading scripture to each other, edifying one another. That's our body of Christ. It's so beautiful. You're impacting each other's lives all day long while I'm in the bed sleep. And then I get up in the wee hours of the night and I'm up till after sunrise, 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock, then I go to bed. So what I want to share with you is I see the comments. I see what you're saying to one another. And what you don't realize is ministry is taking place 24-7 in our group it's taking place and you have no idea how you impact each other's lives 
See, it ain't just about me being up in front of everybody doing all the talking, doing all the ministering, doing all the preaching. No, you guys are preaching to each other. You're edifying one another. Every single one of you in our group is a leader. And you know it. And you see God using you. And you see God using each other to edify one another. Now, now that we've said all that, some of you on YouTube and some in our group feel like you have not gained much ground. You feel like nothing much is going on in your life. God isn't doing much with you. You feel like you're just sitting up on the couch, taking up space, a spiritual couch potato. Well, let me tell you, sweetheart, that's not what you are. I was reading what Lynn was saying as a comment when the guys were getting riled up about something and Lynn said something that only an older, wiser person would have the sense to come up with. And I'm telling you, I looked at that and I said, she has no idea what she just did. She has no idea how much weight that carries. You know, when God calls a, a, a great weight of glory, we don't recognize. My husband was blind in a wheelchair. He had no idea the impact he had on my life as an anchor, as a stabilizer. That man, he settled me down. He made me think. I'm telling you, there's something we don't get that we're getting from each other. We don't understand is what I mean. We're getting it because we're receiving it from each other, but we're not understanding the impact we have. My baby sister, she has stopped me from getting into debt. Yak, 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 and nag, 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 nagging me to debt. But guess what? I didn't go into debt, and it turned out she was right. So the body is meat indeed. If we have an ear to hear, a heart to obey, and a mind to listen, we have to be willing to, to feed off of one another, and we have to be willing to feed one another, to strengthen one another, to counsel one another, to encourage one another, to lift each other's spirits. That's what we have to do because nobody else in the world is gonna do that for us. We have to keep each other strong. So while we're doing it, don't complain because you don't see yourself going anywhere. I used to do it too. I used to feel like I should be so much further down the road. I should be doing great exploits for the Lord. Yeah, we all go through that. But the bottom line is whatever God has you doing, it's still a weight of glory. And God counts by a different scorecard than what human beings count by. So be encouraged. Don't feel like because you have fear issues. Don't feel because you have insecurities. Don't feel because you have shortcomings and you have uh, areas where you haven't gotten the victory yet or you have areas where you're not good at expressing yourself or you're not good at opening up to people or you're not comfortable in your own skin, whatever. Or you feel like you're too old to do anything for God. Don't go there because you have no clue. I wish every single one of you would read, would, what, read, would watch the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. You see how James Stewart played this role of a man who was a banker and he made so many sacrifices to help other people. And when the nitty gritty hit the fan and his back was up against the wall, he didn't know what to do. And the only solution he could see was suicide because he just thought everything was crumbling around him. And all the people that he helped came to his rescue in that one moment. But the thing that's, that was beautiful was how the angel showed him how every, but I'm feeling this right now as I'm saying it, how everybody's life would be so jacked up if he had not existed. If he had, he never preached a sermon. He was never on TV on, on, a, on a telethon. He never spoke to arena people. He wasn't a big name anybody. But with his life not being on the face of this earth, 
one woman that was a beautiful soul would have ended up selling her behind on the street. A man would have been an alcoholic, a, 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 a person living on the street. Why? Because he did something that could have caused somebody, a whole bunch of people, their lives if this one little boy hadn't called him to it. You have no idea the difference you make in people's lives. Get off the world scorecard. It does not count what they think. It does not count what your family thinks, what your friends say about you, all the little snide remarks. She's so special. Well, you know him. No, don't worry about any of that. Let me share this with you. I'm going to let God's word do the talking now. We're in Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6 says, and since some of you are in the word a lot and some are in the word a little, I'm going to read the story till the Lord tells me to stop. All right. This is what God wants to point out in this. This man named Gideon was afraid. He was bound with fear. He was low on faith. Mm -hmm. And he was high on complaints. Check that out. Now listen to this. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come into Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. But both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished. Some of y'all feel impoverished in spirit. Because of the Midianites and the children of Israel, they cried unto the Lord. Let me say this real quick. This just popped in my head. What did Jesus say about those that are impoverished? Not just in, in finance and in sustenance, but in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm. Okay, let me move on. Number seven. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under the oak, which was an opera that pertained unto Joash the Abizurite, and he and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press. That's not where you thresh wheat, not by the wine press. He was scared. To hide it from the Midianites. The boy was in hiding, y'all. Hmm. All right. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord, check out what God said to this scared, insecure, small, impoverished man in hiding. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. <laughs> See, when God speaks, it is. It just is. You see what happened to Andrea? She was so nervous, she wanted to puke. 
But when she jumped in and started working with the team to minister to the homeless, all fear left and she got bold as a lion, didn't she? Why? God spoke something in her spirit and it ignited. That's what happens when God's hand is on you. Listen, 13. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Complain, complain, complain. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. That was the passion he was feeling. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, Oh my Lord, where shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one Man, now we're going to stop there. The story goes on and he picks the army and all that. God leads them. He, he gives them all kind of signs and he puts out a couple of fleeces and the Lord, you know, shows them, yeah, this is me. My promise stands. So he finally dredged up the nerve to do what God told him to do. Well, I'm saying that to say to you, your little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. You know what they said about the disciples? The disciples, they heard them on the day of Pentecost. They're thinking, wait, these are ignorant men. How could they expound like that? How could they, where's all this boldness? Where's all, these are fishermen, ignorant folks. I don't care if you don't know how to read. Listen, God will use you in ways that will astound the intellectual PhDs standing around you. You will be, you will, <laughs> you will blow their minds under God's anointing. Not in your own strength, no. But in God's strength, you will blow their minds. God will take you to new levels that you never thought you could ever do in your life. There are times when God puts his hand on you, I don't care how you feel. When God wants you to do something, he'll take all your aches and pains away when you're under the anointing of God. When I was doing prison ministry, one particular day, I was attacked with a headache, with stomach cramps. My back was killing me from head to toe. I felt horrible. I knew it was an attack because there was nothing wrong with me. I didn't have the flu. I didn't have a cold. I didn't have any problems. I didn't have arthritis, none of that. So I knew that, and I didn't need anything bad. So I knew this was an attack. But we went to prison ministry anyway. And as soon as I stepped up in the pulpit and started to pray for the message, the headache miraculously disappeared. The stomach ache miraculously disappeared. Everything left. And I was able to do what God had called me to do that day. Now, what I want to share with you is God has a calling on your life. Now, you may be in the marinating stage. You know how you get a piece of meat, whether it's turkey, chicken, steak, whatever kind of stuff you eat, and you marinate it overnight. Or well, the meat ain't doing anybody any good right now. It's just sitting there, soaking up flavor. Well, that's what you're doing. You're soaking up the things of God. You're putting on Christ. You're being filled with the love of God. You're being filled with the power of God. All of this is coming on you. The wisdom of God, insights that you never had before. You're learning, you're growing, you're maturing. You're being strengthened on the inner man, but you're just sitting there. You're not doing anything. 
It's like, what am I, Lord? Chop liver? Yeah. But God's got something going on that you can't see. See, God knows how to cloak himself. And you don't see him anywhere around. You don't feel him anywhere around. But God is doing a thing, a deep work in you. You have no clue. You have no clue because his ways are above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. So we'll never figure him out. Yeah, that's the sovereign part that gets on our nerves as humans. Because we want to be in control. We want to be the HNIC up in here. All right, now listen. <laughs> All right, so what ends up happening is God has got each and every one of us in process. There's going to come a time that some of you that are so easily shaken with fear, you're going to rise up. And something's going to rise up in you that's going to blow your mind. You're going to be like, what's going on? What's going on? Where's this coming from? Oh, my goodness, I don't believe I'm doing this. And you're going to speak the word with boldness like you ain't never spoken before. You're going to approach somebody that God says, lay hands on them. I will heal them. And you won't feel the fear. You just, you, it's like something behind you, like all the angels are just shoving you right in that person's face. And you're there. Hi, uh, God told me to do this and do that. Say this and say that. Bam, and you do it. Listen, know that God is going to use you. Ask God to equip you, to flavor you, to fill you, to empower you, to open your mind, to take the limits off, to take the cap off, to take your insecurities out, get rid of all the things that cripple, bind, and paralyze. Because when God's ready to use you, baby, he'll speak what you need. Whatever it is you don't have now, he'll speak it in you when it's time. He'll speak it. I was saved for 15, 20 years. And I'd never been used in prophecy. And then all of a sudden, that started happening. I'd get a word for somebody. And they would say, oh, my God. And they would explain to me what that word was about. I would get uh, a warning for somebody. You better leave that alone or it's going to blow up in your face and you'll spend 25 years paying for it. I mean, all this. And they said, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. That's true. That's true. And they would obey and their life would be blessed. But my point is, I didn't do that when I was 10 years in the Lord. I didn't do it when I was 12. Don't think that because you're not doing stuff now, you're never going to do it. No. Trust your giftings to God. He gave you the gifts. When you use what little gifts you have, he adds more. That's, that's, that's dealing with the talents. He adds more. Be faithful and few. You'll be ruler over great things. Just be faithful. Don't be haphazard. Don't half step. Be faithful. You may not feel like getting up on a Saturday or a Sunday to bring the word. You may not feel like counseling. You may not feel like going to pray for somebody. Just be faithful. Be instant in season and out of season. And God will richly bless you. He really will. I hope it encourages you. Stop looking at your limits. Stop looking at your shortfalls. Stop looking at the areas where you're weak. Stop looking at the areas where you haven't uh, attained certain levels of growth that you feel like you should be at right now. Stop looking at your areas of immaturity. Stop looking at all that. That is nothing to God. Nothing. There's nothing about you that can hinder God from using you the way he wants to. When he's ready, baby, whatever you need that you don't have now will be there because he'll speak it into existence. He will will it and it'll be right there in you and you will be equipped. You will be ready. You will be willing and you will be able. Amen. God bless you. Be encouraged. God is working a thing in you and what he has begun, he will complete. Amen.